Sing a little louder. 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 Oh, my enemy. Sing a little louder. Don't even know the song, but <laughs> the rhythm is really nice. And what the song is trying to convey, my God, your praise is so powerful. It will fight for you. God himself will come and inhabit your praise and he will fight on your behalf. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My melody. To fight for me now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the midst of. Thank you, Jesus. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Hallelujah. He is alive. Glory be to God. He is alive. He is alive. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory, power and honor belongs to my God. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we ascribe my God our praise to none other but the true and living God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Let us dive into the scripture right away. I want to welcome each and every one. Good night. Good night. We are running in the overflow, what I would say. We have about four more chapters left to look on in the book of Revelation. So let us get started. Revelation chapter 19. Please take out your Bibles. 
We are going to dig into the word, okay? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm reading from the NIV version. So we saw yesterday in chapters 18 where doom was pronounced over Babylon. Babylon was judged. And we saw the merchants, the sea captains. We saw kings mourn uh, Babylon's demise. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So there has been so much happening in the book of Revelation up to this point. We see the opening of the seven seals. We see the opening of uh, the, the sounding of the trumpets and the outpouring of the seven bowls. And almost all of that seems as if there is destruction and gloom. But I want to remind us that the judgment of God not only brings about um destruction but it also brings about vindication glory be to god it allows sin to be removed and makes way for the kingdom of god hallelujah and tonight we are gonna see that someone some groups of people are praising god they are celebrating the fall of Babylon. Turn with me in your Bibles to chapter 19, and I'm reading from the NIV version. <clears throat> After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting. After this, after the judgment of Babylon, it's referring to. And what were they shouting? Hallelujah! Salvation, glory, power belongs to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. And we spoke about the fact that adulteries really refers to idolatry. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. So judgment upon Babylon resulted in vindication and justice for the servants of God. Verse three, and again, they shouted, hallelujah, glory be to God. If we recognize nothing else in this text, we ought to realize how full and rich it is of praise. Um, everybody in heaven and on earth are coming to the realization that God is just and God is true and that he is worthy of praise. So for those of us who are not in the habit of praising God, for those of us who can't say a hallelujah loud, if you intend to get into heaven, you have to be ready to be able to voice Ah, uh, your praise to be voiced, to be able to voice your worship. Glory be to God. You need to start practicing the art and the act of worship. Even now, the Bible tells us that God is requiring us to worship him in spirit and truth. And therefore, in the slightest or the greatest of issues and matters, we can always lift our hand and say, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah to our Lord and our King. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So verse 3 again and again they shouted hallelujah. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. I want to remind us that judgment is an eternal state. So if it is that you are on the receiving end of this fire, then it is not a judgment you get, um, you're dealt with there and then no, it is eternal life of damnation. So that's why the Bible says her smoke goes up forever and ever. It is bringing about that point of um, eternal punishment. Uh, verse four. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who was seated on the throne. Again, we see the 24 elders 
and they have the same attitude. Let us not forget these are men or that have been given. Well, now they're, they're, um, what's the best way to, to put it? They, their bodies have been transformed basically, but they have been given a position of great stature. They have thrones of their own. And every time, from time to time, we see them getting up from their own throne. And what do we see them doing? We see them falling face down before the throne of the living God. We must get into a habit of getting up from our throne, that which some of us have enthroned ourselves. We need to get up from that place and fall before the living God. God in humility and submission to him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, they say, praise our God, all his servants who fear him, both great and small. Hallelujah. Who are the servants of the Lord? Those that do his bidding those that make God their priority, those that fear him, whether they are large or they are small, whether they are great or small, the text says. Let us look at verse six. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing water and like the loud peals of thunder shouting. So this is a a, a lot of people, right? And they are now singing, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Glory be to God. Anybody who has been married knows about the pomp and pride of a bride on her wedding day. Glory be to God. So we see here again the word wedding. Wedding slash marriage in scripture is, is seen as a covenant. So the covenant here that they're talking about is a covenant with God through Jesus Christ by way of the blood. Glory be to God. And we see mention again of the lamb. And we know that the lamb, the lamb speaks of the Passover lamb and it speaks of the process of redemption. So those that make it into the wedding of the lamb, this great feast will have to be those that have been redeemed by the lamb who is Jesus Christ by way of the blood. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us it's only one mention in the Bible about Jesus attending a wedding while he was here on earth. And it was in reference to what they, they, refer, to, they refer to as his first miracle, turning water into wine. The Bible says that the glory of Jesus was revealed that day. The Bible says that people commented that the best wine was, 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 um, was the wine that Jesus, uh, the water that Jesus turned into wine. Glory be to God. And can you imagine at this banquet, this heavenly banquet, glory be to God, the best wine will be saved for last. The best wine, which is Jesus Christ. My God and my King, I am going to be able to taste of the source of life because the Bible says that indeed Jesus is a living water. That is how, and uh, my God, he transformed water my God into that which is a wine so Jesus himself is a source of life glory be to God and that wine that we shall partake of is none other than the living water the living water the living Jesus my God almighty glory be to God hallelujah the Bible says that the bride has made herself ready to be ready means that 
we know what it what it takes to to um get yourself ready for a wedding you pick out the right dress the the place has to be ready the food has to be this the that has to be that the hair has to be done so to the believer has to be in a frame of mind of getting themselves ready to meet my god their groom hallelujah the bible says that god our maker is our husband and he is our redeemer and our savior we have to get sanctified glory be to god in in order to be ready for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus at Mount Sinai when Israel was supposed to meet God, Moses sanctified the people and he washed their clothes in preparation for God. We don't need to be, it's not about the washing of our outer garment, but it is about the washing of our heart. It's about coming to a point and a state where we are holy. We are found a spotless glory be to God. Hallelujah. And we are now, according to what the Bible says, uh, verse 8 clothed in fine linen bright and clean um was given to her for fine linen stands for the righteous acts of god's holy people now in that same passage in mount sinai the people were terrified and they stood afar off from god Worship they made and worship the golden calf. I want to remind us that if we don't allow God to have his way and to sanctify us wholly, then we will find ourselves bowing down to that which we ought not to glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want to also uh, uh, remind us that garments in the Bible has to do with deeds. So if you have no good deeds, that means you are naked. You are in a position of shame. Glory be to God. And that's why the Bible says uh, in the passage we looked on yesterday that the harlot, she was naked. She had no good deeds. All her deeds were abominable in the sight of God. Hallelujah. So once we have received the redemption and we have allowed God to work in us and through us by the Holy Spirit, we find ourselves being prepared day by day by his grace, day by day through his spirit uh, in a place where we are ready for God. And having come to the truth of who God is, then there is something that we are required to do for God. Good deeds is as much a part of our serving God as it is prior and worship. Glory be to God. So can I ask somebody tonight, are you ready to meet God? Are you ready for the wedding of the Lamb? Are you ready? Are you, do you have on the right garments? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Are you clothed with, with good deeds? Are you clothed in righteousness? Or is your life uh, full of sin? Glory be to God. Are you like some of those people that they say come um onto the, the 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 trade at saving station but you have not left the station you are still where you were when you accepted jesus christ you have not grown any bit you have one foot in and you have one foot out and it's a child god knows there's some mystery uh god God knows that that's how you stay, but God knows that the power of the Holy Ghost can, can uh, and the word can change you if you allow the change to take place. Glory be to God. Do not find yourself unprepared. Do not shy away from meeting God like Israel did and find yourself in a place where you're worshiping. A oh, sorry. 
I had to check myself less. Our Facebook censors me. But do not find yourself in a place where you worship the, the works of your hands. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And God will bring to your mind a Christian that is, is eagerly looking to serve him and to be right before him. God will bring to your mind that thing in your life that does not bring him any glory. Glory be to God. Let's look again in the scripture. Then the angel said to me, write this. We're reading verse nine. Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. So this is, I believe, the third beatitude or the third blessing. Glory be to God. And in order to be invited, there must be a redemptive process. But there also needs to be a sanctification process as well. Glory be to God. And he added, these words are the true words of God. The Bible says God honors his word above his name. So you can take this word to the bank and surely it, the, the, it, it will be um, as it has been said here. Glory be to God. At this, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, don't do that. No. John, it's an angel that is revealing all of these things to John. And John knows that God is against worshiping created things. Yet still John falls down on his face to worship the angel. Why is that? The first time I looked at it, I said to myself, it is so easy even if you're in the spirit or you are a believer to fall down and, and do the things that you should not do. But really and truly when we examine the text, when you are exposed to, to what is the glory of God, hallelujah, then it begin, it, it's almost as if you assign that glory with the one that is showing you these things. And so it is that in our humanity, we can end up falling prey to that thing and so the, it is this is why also with prophecy we need to be careful glory be to god we need to be careful because when things are revealed to us there appears to be a level of glory and in some way shape or form we, we want to bow down and worship that and that leads us into a wrong path if that individual is not the one that is led by God to say, don't do it. So we see here, the angel said, don't do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. So let us look at this a little. We spoke about the testimony of Jesus already. And it's when the spirit living inside of you, uh, you begin to become transformed into the image and likeness of your God. You begin to look like Jesus. You begin to act like Jesus. You do the will of the Father and your chief concern is ensuring that you are pleasing God. Now, the Bible says you should worship God for it is a spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. Let me stop here and say that the prophetic office and prophecy as written in the word of God is very important, but it is being misused. Why is prophecy important? The Bible tells us that prophecy bears witness to Jesus. It testifies of 
who Jesus is. It testifies of the redemptive power of the blood. It testifies of the lamb. It testifies that indeed he is the son of God. It testifies that he is the one that will set the world free through his blood. Uh, glory be to God and the one that will come and judge the world on account of this. Glory be to God. Let us look at verse 11. I saw heaven standing open and there was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. Now this is about the third time we are seeing heaven open. And now we are seeing heaven open and we are seeing the white horse and the rider is faithful and true. This one is a Messiah. This one is Jesus. We have seen it before earlier in the chapter, I believe in chapters um, six, when there was a white horse that came when the first uh, seal was open. But we know that that is an imposter. That is an imposter because what came with him was death. But the Bible tells us that Jesus here is coming. He's called faithful and true. And with justice, he judges and wages war. As I've said before, Jesus is not coming back as a gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Look upon a little child, but he is coming back. Glory be to God as a mighty man man of war hallelujah and he's coming back with a sword in his mouth not a physical sword but the very oh my god words of his mouth will either condemn you or it will vindicate you glory be to god the bible says his eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns now we have seen the imagery of, bla of <clears throat> blazing fire in chapters one and the many crowns suggest his rulership. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. This is a strange classification, but what it is really saying is that who can understand the fullness of God? but God himself. Who can understand the fullness of the Son of God, but the Son of God himself? Glory be to God. So no one knows that name. And the Bible says he is dressed in a robe, a robe dripped in blood, and his name is the word of God. Glory be to God. The name of the Messiah is the word of God. The name of the Messiah is the word of God. The Bible tells us what the word of God is. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh and the world word came and dwell among men. The Bible tells us that the word is sharper than any two-edged sword that cuts through bone and marrow. Glory be to God. The Bible tells us that God's word has to achieve and establish its purpose. It will not go back to God. Void. Hallelujah. So what is this uh, look of a robe dipped in blood? One, it speaks to redemption. Hallelujah. The second thing is this. I want us to turn in our Bibles or when you get a chance to read, please read Isaiah 63. It is speaking about the day of God's vengeance and redemption. So on this very day that God uh, carries out his vengeance, there, the, the other side of it is redemption. Glory be to God. Who is coming from Edom, from Basra, with his garment stained crimson? Who is this robed in splendor, striding forward in the greatness of his strength? It is I, 
Jesus and starting in there proclaiming victory, mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those of one treading the winepress? And he responds, I have trodden the winepress alone from the nations no one was with me and I trampled them in my anger and I trodden them down in my wrath. Their blood splattered my garments and I stained all my clothing. It was for me the day of vengeance, the year for me to redeem had come. Glory be to God. The year to redeem had come. And this is what this scripture is saying to us. The Redeemer cometh, and he cometh on a white horse, and his gown is dipped in blood. Glory be to God. Behold, he comes. The songwriter says, riding on the clouds, hallelujah, shining like the sun. As the trumpet is sounded, glory be to God, hallelujah. The armies of heaven was following him. So he was not alone. Remember he had said on the cross, I could have called 10,000 angels, but it wasn't his purpose, my God, to call the army of heaven. At that point, his purpose was to die, to redeem mankind. But now his purpose is to judge. So he's coming, glory be to God, with an army of angels. And they were following him and they they were also on white horses and they were also dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says coming out of his mouth was a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule with an iron scepter. Now the Bible says, don't think I have come uh, with peace, but I have come with a sword. Glory be to God. When the gospel come, the very embodiment of the gospel is Jesus Christ. It comes, it either does two things. You are either saved or you will be cut by glory be to God. Hallelujah. You either allow the gospel you repent and submit to it. You allow the gospel to kill your flesh and you submit your will to God or you continue in carnality and be caught by the, by the sword of, the, of, of, of Jesus' mouth when he returned on that day of vengeance. The Bible says he will rule with an iron scepter. That means his rulership will be firm. Glory be to God. His rulership will be firm and sin will not be tolerated under his rule or rebellion. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So he treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God. Hallelujah. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has his name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. Ah, We'll understand why. We have seen this term over and over and over again. Why do the heathens reign? Why rage? Why do the, the, the people of the earth and the kings imagine a vain thing? Can a man battle with the Lord and win? We'll find out the answer to that question in a little while. Verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. Is such a thing possible? Is such a thing possible? This tells us that this is only the glory and the power uh, of God that allow these things to happen. Who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in mid-air, come gather together for the great supper of, of God. So before we saw the banquet of the Lamb, which is where the sanctified, redeemed, and robed believer will go. But now we are seeing the great supper of God. And we will see who will be attending this supper because people apparently are making reservations to go so that they may eat the, the flesh of kings, of generals, and the mighty 
of horses and their riders and the flesh of all people, free, slave, great, and small. Now, what is this in reference to? We saw in the previous chapter that an army is going to rise up that the beast out of the out of the mouth of the dragon of the beast and of the false prophet will come spirits the bible says that looks like frog and they are demonic and they will go out and they will uh in Jamaican terms, bait up these kings to come and battle against God. The Bible says they will come to wage war against the Lamb. So reading on verse 19, then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast, hmm, hallelujah, glory be to God. The beast, the Bible says, was captured. And not only was he captured, but the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf, with these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast, and worship its image so he too was captured glory be to god hallelujah so when we look and we see these things the devil has been going on and on all this while he has done and come up with many things to deceive the people and he has had his fill of the blood of god's people but in a short order the bible says that without it, it looks as if without much effort the the um the beast and the false prophet was overcome by the lamb and his army my god and my king in the name of jesus christ of nazareth there is a lesson in this for us when we put jesus before us and when we put our god before us in any battle my god it is almost as if there is nothing for us to do because let me correct that what we need to do is to put our faith in god and have god go before us and fight the battle he is after all the lord god almighty the lord of the the army of hosts glory, glory be to god sometimes we are fighting battles in the flesh if only we would allow god to fight it if we'd allow God to fight those battles, then we would not have been stressing out ourselves so much. Because these matters are spiritual. They cannot be one in the flesh. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And we know our God is all powerful. Our God is almighty. Our God is King of kings and Lord of lords. He has never lost a battle. Glory be to God. If you read in the, in, in the book of Kings, God is a mighty man of war. He has various strategies. When the Philistine came upon David over and over again, God used different strategies to defeat the enemy. I recall one strategy strategy God said to David do not go up against them wait until you hear the sound I am going over before you I am going over in the poplar trees and when you hear the sound David then you can advance Rivio Sata we need to uh, allow God to go before us in the battle and we need to have spiritual ears to hear when God is saying go forth now my daughter because when God goes before us God fight all we come in and do is just pick up the pieces glory be to God the Bible tells us that God fights with hailstone my God Almighty in this very book 100 pound hailstone coming down on man coming down on the enemy glory be to God who can withstand that 
The Bible tells us of a story that the angels went over, the, the Assyrians had gathered against Israel and angels went over into the camp of the Assyrians in the night and killed 125,000 of them. And when the people got up, what did they see? Dead man here, dead man there. We need to pray, oh God, go over before us in this battle, my God and my King send divine assistance Lord to go before me and through the enemy my God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth there are some places you and I can't go but the spirits of God the ministering spirits can go and fight that battle on our behalf in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth look at this scene my God and my king the kings came up against Jesus and the heavenly the army and without much ado the bible says that the beast and the false prophet was captured my god devil you are defeated that's why the bible says we don't what we don't fight from a place as if we're fighting for victory victory has already been achieved somebody needs to stand up on their feet and possess my god the victory that has already been fought and won for us glory be to god hallelujah 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 i don't know if any of us has ever been in a battle and when we start to tell the devil listen hell is your portion back up in the name of Jesus. he understands and he knows the devil knows scripture he just doesn't uh abate but he understands his end and that's why we, there is so much going on now to thwart the believer, to bring us to that place with him. Hell was not made for human beings. It was made for the devil and his angels. Let us not be those who are in rebellion, glory be to God, and think we can battle with the Lord. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, ah, then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth. I don't know why I need to read that again, but I think I need to. Then I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured. I said, devil, you will be captured. Devil, your end is already pronounced. You will be captured and the false prophet along with you. So your signs and your wonders that you use to delude and our people and cause them to receive the mark and to worship the image, you will have to give an account for it. The two of them were thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur the bible says alive it doesn't necessarily speak to the fact that they were physically alive but it means that they will be in alive eternally to experience the fire and the, the burning sulfur of the of of hell glory be to god hallelujah glory be to god the rest were killed with a sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse. I said the word of God and the mouth, the word of God. The Bible says he is the word. It is powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible says you're joined here with Christ Jesus. You have the word in your mouth too. You need to speak the word and allow the sword to cut down some principalities and powers, to cut down, my God, some evil workers, to cut down, my God, some unclean spirit. Speak the word of glory be to God. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Kill my God Almighty, that which is evil, with the word of God. Speak it, stand on it, my God, and watch God work. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible says that God watches over the righteous the bible says god will perform his word glory be to god so the rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse and all the birds gorge themselves on their flesh now i want to point out to us flesh 
carnality. Carnality is the thing that will bring us down. We have to learn to kill our flesh. There are some things in our flesh, glory be to God, you can't rebuke it. You can't rebuke it. Your skin, or, or just for an example, is the largest organ on your body. You can't rebuke your skin or your flesh. You have to subdue it. You have to put it down. You have to use the spirit of God to, to place the flesh in its place, glory be to God. Because if we don't, we'll never find ourselves in that place where we are sanctified and robed and ready for the coming of my God and my King. Lord God, I don't know about you, but every time God has me to go over these scriptures, all that I am concerned about is to make myself ready, is to make my way sure. The Bible says that there is coming uh, two great feasts, two great feasts. One is a wedding and one is a supper, if you want to call it that. One is the supper of God, one is the wedding of the Lamb. I want to ensure that I am uh, ready for the wedding of the Lamb. Therefore, I need by God's grace a divine introspection and analysis of where I stand with God. Is there anything, God, in me that makes me unclean and not sanctified, unholy in your sight, God? Am I saying one thing and doing another, Lord? What does uh, what do I look like when I am off this video, God? Do I reflect Jesus Christ? Is there holiness in every aspect of my life? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me one minute. Oh, my computer was going down. Hallelujah. Is there holiness? Without holiness, no man will see the face of God. So we have to get church not preaching holiness anymore. All we're talking about is wealth and prosperity. But I want to remind you, as we have seen yesterday, that it doesn't matter how wealthy you are. If you are not holy and sanctified, you ain't going there. Glory be to God. There is a song I remember. I want to make church... Uh, Church friends used to sing, no sin, no sin, no sin can enter there. Glory be to God. I don't come to con uh, condemn anyone, but I come according to what God has purpose to reveal what is in the word of God. And the word of God is saying, we have to get ready for this banquet. Glory be to God. If you fail to prepare, you're prepared to fail. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And then there are those who have positioned themselves against God. We pray earnestly that by some grace, by some divine um, occurrence, by some divine happening, that God, their hearts will be, my God, soften to do, towards the will and purposes of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, I end tonight my God and my King with just a simple prayer. Make me a testimony, my God. By your grace, make me a testimony of Jesus Christ. Lord God, help me, Lord God, by your grace to wash my garment in the blood of Jesus Christ. Sanctify me, my God, with 
within and without in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth my God and my King give me a heart like your heart make me and mold me Lord God into your very image I know that oh my God I in some way look like you but there are some things about me that are needs a work God there are some aspects of my life that looks nothing like you God I lay myself on the wheel on the potter's wheel you are the potter my God and I make myself the clay tonight God mold me Lord God and make me Lord reveal Sata into that vessel that you want me to be Lord God you spoke about multiple vessels Lord Lord I don't want to be the vessel that is for common use but I want to be the vessel that is dedicated to the will and purposes of God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth oh God I hear the songwriter says make me over again my God my God my God make me over my God make me over my God yes I've accepted your son yes I've tasted of the blood but I need to be made over God I need to be made over God there are some things God that are out of place only you God can make me over oh God hallelujah 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 glory be to God hallelujah 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 Father, at this stage, what can we say, God? Lord, we pray for those, my God, that still don't know you as Lord and Savior. And we pray, my God, we pray for their souls, God. We know it's not your desire for anyone to be lost, but for all, my God, to come to everlasting life we pray God for the neighbor God for the family member God for the co-worker God for the teacher God for my God that one in leadership that one great and small that king my God that uh, my God person in authority Lord that does not know you as Lord and Savior God I pray pray Lord that the gospel my God will touch their hearts and their hearts will be receptive in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth father we pray most of all Lord God that your will be done over the next couple of days that your will be done in the lives of your people even now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God, shine your light into this dark world through each and every one of us, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we say thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we praise your mighty, matchless name. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. We only have three chapters left. I want you to, to just stick with me because we are going to see the glory of God being manifested in the in his kingdom. Hallelujah. We are going to see God's will finally come to pass. The will of God was not for us to be ruled over by our men, but for him to be our, oh my God, our Lord and Savior and King, but the people wanted a king, so God gave them a king. Hallelujah. Good night, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Amen.